Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna have a look at this this is a ooh, SFP plus XFP and a QSFP plus and QSFP 28 reprogramming device that I have purchased from um, FS.com and FS stands for fiber shop I believe this was a bit of an impulse buy because I was having a lot of internet issues last weekend trying to get different FSP pluses that converts from um, SFP slash SFP plus to uh, RJ45 cover connections and I kind of wanted some other ones these red ones are from fs.com and I needed those and then they had a lot of options to what hardware I needed them to run with if this was to run from Jupiter, Cisco there's a lot of options. A lot of these companies that makes these, especially these higher brands like Cisco, they're really stupid about it and make stuff that is incompatible with everything else. So you need to go and use an arm and a leg to get a Cisco branded piece of equipment to work with their already overpriced switches. And uh, yeah, some companies has um, has made the possibilities to reprogram your other SFPs and have them act like a Cisco SFP. So um, I'm pretty new to this box. So if anyone out there has this or knows a lot about this, I'm a total newbie about this. I just purchased this box because I wasn't sure what my Lenovo server and my Ubiquiti switch, what SFP I needed for that to talk together and uh, before this arrived i would already gotten it to work because it turned out to be a 10g slash 1g issue instead but now that i have it and it was rather pricey so you are definitely going to get a video about it because we need to get some value back out of this <laughs> so let's have a look at it so i said this was definitely not cheap and uh, yeah, they have taken a page out of Apple's book, both uh, the, the design of this uh, box here and the pricing of it. <laughs> That's uh, It's very nice packaged and you can kind of see what it does here. It, it tells you different scenarios where this can be used and there's a, a warning and some information and, and it also points to the App Store or the Google Play Store, which I haven't, I haven't messed with that. But it's the fsbox.com. I am not sponsored by this. I paid good money for this and I will have to thank my patrons for that. I probably wouldn't have gotten this if so many of you wasn't supporting me on Patreon because this was a bit too expensive to just purchase if it wasn't because I was doing videos about stuff like this. So um, yeah, it slides open just like any uh, iPhone and inside I have reboxed it just for your well there was nice plastic around this as well so first you get the box out of there and it's uh, it has a nice sleeve here in some uh, yeah it's totally apple rip off and um, here is the box it's plastic i think uh oh this it feels like it's a metal plate on top here but there is three holes in it here there is one for sfp plus and one for sfp 28 then there is an XFP, I think I said that wrong before. And then there is a slot that will work with QSFP Plus and QSFP 28. So um, yeah, three holes. And on the back, there is a USB-C connection. So that is nice. Otherwise, in the box, we have the manual uh, in, uh, I believe, English, Deutsch, French. Was that it? Yeah. English, English, German and French, so probably European version. And then we have a cable, um, USB to USB-C. And then the box is, um, is empty. There is a lot of padding in here, so they could have made this considerably smaller. It only had to be half as big, but, well, you know, it's an old trick. If you want to charge a little bit more, well, make the box bigger. Just see it graphics card boxes. They are ridiculously big, so. but this is really what you get. And I'm going to be using my laptop and just to promote a little bit, this is Discord 
and every Sunday when I'm done with the day's work <laughs> on YouTube I join the, the voice chat, general chat here in Discord. It might get late before I get on but even last week when I had no internet I was in here and chatted with people. Right now there is no one because um, they, usually, they usually show up at night. Um, but sometimes there are eight, nine people chatting in here. Sometimes it's just me and Raphael. Hi Raphael. <laughs> and um, yeah, I very much encourage that. You have to be a patron to get access to my Discord server. But jump out as fast as possible before anyone joins and I have to go. So to get on here, you need to sign in. You, you have to create an account with the uh, FS, the fiber store. And this is the same account. If you ever purchased anything here and you created an account there, well, you, you can use that account. I did. I changed my name over here because that's my email address that it shows and I didn't want to put that on screen. But um, yeah, you, you create an account if you don't already have an account. I create an account and I'll log in on here. So then you're presented with this. It can see that the software is not installed on the computer. So we get the option. This can be installed on Windows or Mac OS. And we are on a Windows machine, so we'll pick that. So uh, Linux guys, this is not for you, but you're still on 1G anyway, right? This new modern stuff. So it downloads that, four megabytes. So it was done before I almost got to point at it. So in that zip file that I downloaded is this SF installer and uh, it's an MSI file. So we'll copy that down there to my temp directory and we'll run that. Next, next, finish, get a move on. So it's next, next, get a move on, finish. And it wants to make changes. Uh, and it's done, close. Okay, now we should be able to connect the device. So let's do that. Uh, this wire is long enough. Um, <laughs> it's very long for a, for a thing that is supposed to sit right next to something. But, well, better too long than too short, I guess. And I shouldn't have... I curl it up to put it back in the box. So now it's... It's messing with me, so I will put that back there. And find the USB connection. There. And it has a, it has a nice white light there, and it finds the USB device is not recognized. Let's see what happens when we go back to the web page here. Uh, no blah 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 driver installed. Let's try and, and give that an F5. Eh, still not installed. Eh, I've, I've seen that sometimes you need to plug these in. Oh, and that comes up with something. Uh, opening blah 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 blah. Always allow. Yeah, that's probably a good thing. Open. Uh, okay. And let's try. Hmm, program is already running. Start updating configuration. Okay, so it is. It's on its way. Program already running. Okay, so now it's ready for the box. It doesn't see the box, which is weird as heck. Okay, so maybe we need to unplug it. And it saw that and plug it back in. Yeah, okay, so now it says, please insert your transceiver for reading. I'm gonna plug this Cisco one in. I haven't done any changes to this, so. Uh, and I'm probably not gonna do any changes to it. <laughs> it's very disturbed right now. So, that's weird. And it's complaining again. Does not see it. Sees it, does not see it. So we'll try that again. It's connected. Please insert receiver, transceiver. It's reading it. You see that? Oh, it's blinking. 
So, okay, so now it's working. It doesn't see the brand. It gives me the serial number of the receiver and it gives me a part number of the receiver and it gives me some choices that I can do with the receiver. I, I get a rather long list of different receivers uh, uh, that I can configure this to be and I can choose the brand down here. So there is Cisco, Jumbo, Artisa, I don't know what that, I don't know how to pronounce that, never used that. H3C, Dell, Faustin, Brocade, Intel, IBM, Huawei, Netgear, Extreme, Elcatel, Lucent, Generic, and Mellanox as the main brands here that you can pick. Something like Lenovo and Hewlett Packard is missing. And I think I heard about some controversial about that, but I'm sure someone who knows a lot more about this will, will enlighten me in the comments below why they're not here. Especially someone like Hewlett Packard, which I myself has had way too many SFP issues with. I don't have any of Hewlett Packard's SFPs. I think I have some, some fiber channel thingies, uh, but I have a whole box of Lenovo's. So I think we will try and pop one of those in and see what it's what it says about that. This is a 10 gigabit Lenovo one. So I'm gonna take the one out, the, the Cisco one out, and you can see immediately it sees that it's gone. So we're gonna we're gonna pop that in there. And it sees that. It doesn't exactly see what it's it, it gives us a part number and that looks like an IBM part number that first bit and then the last bit doesn't really look like anything so, and this picture is broken so that is irritating so it would be cool if I could see what that would do but I guess that's a no-go um, part number that's where we can we can pick other part numbers generic ones and we can't pick another brand, so we, oh, we can. I'm not gonna reprogram these, I'm just looking. Ah, if I put the mouse over it, I get the, the part number from it. I think we'll make a note of that. Okay, I have made a note of that. It's, it's here, my red note. And I've looked at the other ones that I have. These one are the same model as, as, as that one. But this one over here has a different label on them, a different logo, and there they are a different model number where these are 46C3448, these are 46C3449, um, so a different model. And it's not necessarily that they're any better, but it's just a different model number, probably just a different batch. So. Uh, Lenovo SFPs are not as expensive as the Hewlett Packard ones, but they're not nearly as cheap as something like this. This is something that I scored from work, and this is a generic one, and we get these and they program them. Uh, usually we use them for Cisco. So uh, this one is for, uh, it's a 10 gigabit for Cisco switch. So let's tr try and program this and see if we can get it as close as possible to this one. So let's try and take the Lenovo one out of here and pop this generic one in. This is, uh, it's, it's like the one, it's like the ones from FS. This is just, I have more of these <laughs> to play with. So uh, yeah, it tells us something different. Okay, so I run into the issue that I can't just give it any part number. I can, I can type here, I can say that this is the 46C and already there it says no data. And I, I can't pick that. So it can't, I can't copy the part number of the, the Lenovo one here. Um, and it has that part number up there which is probably okay for an SFP. This is the Lenovo one and it's, this says that it's a 10 base SR and this is an SFP 10G SR. Uh, so I can't really put the, the Lenovo part number on there. 
I don't have an FS uh, normal one, but I have one of these that goes to RJ45 connection. So I'm gonna take this generic one out and I'm gonna put this FS one in there. Uh, let's see, do we get more choices here? Part number. Okay, so now it, it recognizes it and gives me a picture up here. So that might be why. And they tell me what that thing costs, which is $28. And uh, that, one, that sounds about right for a one gigabit thinky. So apparently it's just because it didn't know what I was putting in there. But I can't change the part number here. I can change the, the speed of this one. I can change between these two if I want it to be a SFP that can have different speeds or if I wanted to just have that one speed so 10, 100, 1000 megabits or just 1000 megabits might be very handy I can tell it what brand it is down here the usual list and I can choose if I want to give it another serial number I can change that there and program that into it nope, let's not do that and we can do batch, so if I have a lot of them, I can tell it that we need to do many. So here I have an Intel one. Um, I do wonder if, if I pop that in there, it shows up and tells me that it's that part number and it's set to that part number and uh, brand, I could choose that. If I start configuring that, but I do a batch job, there could i maybe program that one and then put in the generic one after that like this one and then maybe it would kind of copy that one onto this one if you know that do leave it in the comments below how that works oh dear i think i uh, i started writing one i think i had the settings wrong wonder how this goes it's taking longer than expecting okay so this has been running for way too long at least an hour I've been doing other stuff yeah it's not doing anything else than that so I think we're gonna we're gonna pull the plug on this that didn't really change much did it eh now that is weird let's try and f5 this oh we lost internet connection. Okay, so now we are up and running again. I'm gonna, well, this one was the one that I was trying to put in here. Uh, and then it was, I'd set it up for multiple. So it doesn't seem like it has done anything to it. So that's probably a good thing. I don't really want to delete this one. But let's try and put this Lenovo one back in there again. Insert your thinky in, into the thinky. Let's start this batch thing. Uh, we can't do that. I have to do some choices here. Uh, that's not gonna work. So, but now it's set to batch thing. So what happens if we put this one back in? So then it tries to program that. And I think that's what's going wrong. It did not go well. Let's count to 20 or something like that. I'm guessing that I can probably take it out now and it will just keep doing that. Oh, and there I was wrong. <laughs> Let's put it back in. <laughs> this is weird. I let this run a bit longer. Um, it has not done anything different. So I think we'll just... Yeah. A little bit forth and back and it was okay again. We're, it reads the serial number out from from the thing easier. I have something else that I want to try. Um, FS also makes duct cables and if you buy a duct cable they also ask you what equipment that you're going to be using it for. So I do believe that it takes these duct cables as well and you can you can do stuff with that. So let's let's try and pop that in. Uh, 
Yeah, it sees an SFP 10 gigabit dock cable there. And, but well, it tries to sell me a 0.3 meter long cable. So it doesn't know the length of the cable, but apparently we can tell it how long the cable is. And we can choose a brand, the same brands as before. But apparently we can configure our duct cable as well. That could get useful someday. Um, I purchased all these duct cables as generic and they have been working fine on my Ubiquiti equipment and the Lenovo equipment. So um, no issues there, just wanted to check. I don't have a lot of um, QSFP equipment, but I do have one here, which is, uh, it has an MPO connection there and it has a QSFP connection there. So I wanted to see that in the box as well. And it goes in that way, I hope. Ah. Ah. Hmm. It thinks that it's a, it has a part number, it has that. I think it has just picked some random stuff. This should be a 40 gigabit. Oh, it doesn't say there. It says on the, it says it on the thinky. XCVR 40 gigabit SR QSFP to MTO. It recognizes it. That's, um, I don't have anything. And I don't need to program this to anything. I don't have anything that this will fit in. So one of the other things that you can do when you plop something in here, get DDM information up here. And it tells us the temperature of the device. 17 point, well, it is cold in here. If you can hear in the background, there is a bit of noise. I have actually turned on the wood stove. So yeah, that's way closer. Yeah, wood stove, I've uh, been cleaning it too, while this was trying to program. Uh, so it tells me different information about it. Right now, 3.33 volts. Temperature is climbing on it, just having it connected. Transmission power, receiving power is both minus 40 dB. Up here we can open this testing thing and then it will start doing something. It's trying to transmit. Barely touched the box and then it lost connection. Ugh. Hard to say if it's doing anything. Well, I can't see anything on the screen, so you probably can't see it. Oh, maybe we need to turn on this testing thing, Morton. Yeah, now we can see something coming. Can you see that? Yeah, it's it's red in there, in one of them. So far, so good. Wonder if you can get a loop or something for it, so that you can just uh, have a have it transmit and receive the same data. That's probably how they want you to do that. Oh, in the name of science, I'm gonna take this one apart. Um, I have already started. It, it, it comes apart, which is really smart, and it's not too long, so that would be a great thing to have laying around to do this test. So I'll fix that. You can see that the temperature has been heating up on this SFP, which they do. They get uncomfortably hot. I don't know why they get that, that hot, but they do. Um, I've made this. I'm very proud. Let's see if it works or if I just crapped a good cable for no reason whatsoever. So let's pop that in. There. It does. See that? Now it's receiving data. I have no idea what the, the losses is in that. It could be very interesting. Right now it says minus 3.36 dB. I have kind of made it kind of a small thing here, so maybe if we don't make it go in such a small loop, we will get less of a. I'm gonna I'm gonna unwind the cable, but let's see uh, the number here. When I do that, <laughs> that was harder said than done. It, it doesn't want to go. I'll I'll try and fix that. Just a second. Less of a loop. Uh, we'll put it back to the SFP, there, put the SFP back in the box, and we're back. Oh, and then we need to start the test here. 
Let's see if that's any better. Meh. That 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 made no difference whatsoever. Not doing any difference. Um, I roll it back up. It's more handy like this. But let's try and clean it. I probably did test this before I put it in the in the bag, but well, you never know. So let's clean each of them with a fiber optic cleaner pin here and let's pop that back in. I have no idea if, if that loss is normal. So 3.32, guess that's probably not too bad. It's still heating up, uh, steady on voltage and it's using, yeah, okay. It, let's try another one. While that thing was programming and failed, I was cleaning the windows in my wood stove burner here. And for the first time ever, I'm gonna go and clean my hands for doing video work because it looks stupid doing fiber optic cables with dirty hands. Here I have a couple of SFP 28s actually. These are 25 gigabit. I had these, you can see I put a minus on them. I was correcting error on network cables at work this week. And at some point I replaced the SFPs and everything was good again. So I, I have marked them as error. So let's try and pop one of those in and see uh, see what happens. There, it sees it. We can see the data on it. It sees the data. It doesn't give me as much as I could have hoped for here. It would be cool if it had if it had some more. It sees the serial number, which is which looks about right. So, but let's try that test thing again. And then let's try and start the test. See if it transmits. It transmits okay, and it's it's even pretty good. Okay, so that's in the red. Ah, I wonder if if that's bad when it's down there. So we're gonna pop that in, see what happens then. Then it should receive something down here. It does. So it's in the white. That dropped a bit when we popped that in, but it's still in the good. If if that is the good. <laughs> Yeah, and it should probably not ever get up here. Then there's coming more light through than we're sending. Uh, this one looks pretty okay. Hmm? Interesting. Let's try the other one. I have connected the other one. So let's pop that in. Yep. And start the test. And that is also white line up there. I'm guessing the red line down there is not so good. Now that I see that. So apparently I did not have an SFP28 problem at work, but anyhow, it, it fixed it when I replaced it. Okay, I've had this running for a bit. I was actually cheating and trying to read the manual. And the manual is very thin for this. I think it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, seems I've scored myself a couple of 25 gigabit SFP28. That is working. That's nice, thank you. Okay, so it's running and I can kind of go test all my SFPs. You can get some more data by, uh, by putting the cursor here and it will tell you what's going on. I have no idea what all of these measurements means, but they are there. <laughs> so uh, when I figure out what they do, uh, okay, it sets the alert status. So it's only the middle one, the blue one there. That is really important. The other ones are, what are this? So if it becomes minus three dB, you get a low warning. And if it becomes minus four dB, you get a high warning. So, okay. So here's another one. It's also in the white. So apparently that one is good as well. Just wanna go back, have it pick up what kind of stuff it is. And go in here again. Try and turn it on, see if it still says the same thing. It's still up in the white, so I guess that's good. Mm. I'm testing one here, and it's not as if it doesn't work. You can see the numbers are, are fine. They're in the white up here, 
but the temperature that went up like crazy okay now it's not as wild anymore now it's more steady but it it came up from 20 degrees to 33 degrees in like seconds so maybe the temperature sensor is very close to where the heat is produced now I'm testing some other ones. These these are called uh, Skylane. They are also kind of a general one. And these are way different when you look at the, the high and lows here. You, you get a, a low warning at minus 8.3 dBs. And the same thing at the, at the receiving end. Uh, minus 12.1 dB you get the low warning and found something interesting as well if you go over here to the, the temperature it also shows you what uh, what to expect here uh, low warning at minus 5 degrees and low alert at minus 10 but this one goes up to uh, 85 degrees c then you get a high warning at 90 degrees you get a high alert so this is very temperature <laughs> well it goes up high here I'm testing another brand or another thing this is what it says on here and uh, we can see the the numbers here well it, it gives you a warning at seven and a half minus DB and an alert at 8.5 and the temperature is different this is this one only goes up to 70 degrees before it gives you a warning and 75 it gives you an alert didn't know that so I'm having fun testing all my SFPs I uh, just tested all these the Nova ones and they are all good. Um, they have like, you can kind of see there's a yellow and then there's a lighter yellow. And down here there's a red and then there's a lighter red. It marks the, the warning and the alert thing. And on on that roll over here with, with a smaller logo and another, well it has a, a different, it has that different model number as well. Uh, it had some numbers and this one has other numbers. I'm pretty sure Lenovo does not make these themselves. They're branded. So that's why there is different model numbers. Uh, the temperature of this one is like this. 78 degrees is max. And it goes down to minus 13. And the other one was different. Um, this one is uh, special by that it uses a lot of power. The other ones that I've tested was about 5 milliamps. This one is 8.6. So, power hungry sucker. Another difference between them is how big this area up here is. This has to be in a very fine spot to be working correctly. While down here, look how wide that white spot is. It's, it's humongous. And if we move that, we can see that it will work all the way down to minus 20 dBs and not many of them does that okay this brand <laughs> i don't know what it is but um yeah, it takes the record look at that it goes up to 105 degrees c this one is using 5.37 milliamps and it goes down to 40 c so that's a difference of 145 degrees awesome so now i'm testing some intel ones uh this model here and this one is the one that I've come across that has used the least amount of power, 3.82 milliamps, but it's operating at pretty low. Well, all of these Intel ones are minus five dB. And yeah, so a different model, but very power efficient. I took this opportunity to check all of my SFP and SFP pluses. Well, these are all SFP pluses. These are more the converters from SFP to RJ45 connections. And I even went out into the car where my uh, laptop is and I had a, a bunch laying around. And I only found one that is ever so slightly in the red here. So it's, it's, it's not sending the amount that it should, but there it's, it is receiving what it should and uh, let's see temperature okay uses about 7.55 milliamps and this is not even for network i'll just take it out here this one is for fiber channel and it's a 16 gigabit hewlett packard enterprise one well we have kind of replaced quite a few of these as they have become baddish 
not that big a surprise, but I am surprised that it's the only one that is messing with me. Where I would have thought that I would have had a lot of other bad ones laying around. Now we can just see it pop up there, but it doesn't go up into the white here. So yeah, that's interesting. So this was for sure a bit of impulse shopping when I got this. Nothing was working and I needed I needed to try something so I purchased this and then, then shortly after that I got it working and then I had ordered it. Uh, I was really gonna order these three SFP pluses to RJ45 connections uh, to get my internet up and running. Uh, <laughs> but then this box fell in the basket as well and yeah, I never noticed it. <laughs> well, I did. I think it's kind of cool. I think it's uh, kind of sad that it does not have like a standalone programming tool with it so that you can um, install the software and just use it. You have to be connected online and up against fs.com to, to do anything. Um, I might just try that so that I'm not lying too much. Let's see. Okay, I could be wrong. It might actually be working even though there I, I turned the internet off. But I think it has to be on when you turn the device on. But right now it's it's doing it okay. Um, it's it's not receiving anything because I didn't put in the cable. And I'm very proud of my loop cable here. If you're in need of SFP pluses, well they just happens to be in my store. And now they're also tested. So at least light is going out and it can see it when it comes back in. And it's in the good white thing in the middle. So that part is tested on all of the SFPs that I currently have uh, <laughs> in my shop. So um, yeah, I think I will leave it there. Go visit my shop, check out my SFP thinkies. And um, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.